Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome to another video of question and answer of Dr. Zakir Naik where a brother asked question about the theory of evolution of man. So watch the video and after that we will talk about the video. My name is MD Marathe. I am a technologist. Before I start, I would just like to explain that I would like to take the audience from the sentimental plane to a more scientific and rational plane. I hope I have a permission to Today's school books present the following information. In the course of evolution, the animal man or Homo erectus evolved 2 million years ago with a brain size of 1000 cc against a size of 400 cc of the apes. Evolution continued with the brain growing to 1400 cc 200,000 years ago and this animal was known as Homo sapien. The present form of man was evolved about 35,000 years ago and is known as Homo sapien sapien. Anthropologists have estimated that man developed a speech center in his brain 50,000 years ago. Now the question is, in this record of development, when did God originate and for what purpose? Number two, the progress of science has made it possible uh, to… Only one question, sir. You, any no, no, question This is ask? in relation to that. If you cut it short… No, no, it's, 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 where is it? the answer will not be long. Give me the time for the questions, please. Yeah, yeah, okay. Did progress God of origin? science has made it possible to clone all animals including man to produce any number of animals having all desired characteristics. If God ever existed, how much of the power attributed to God is now left with him? Third one, if God is described as a sea of kindness, finished, and mercy. Yet all leaders of all religions, when faced with the prospect of death, rush to a hospital like the one next door and never to the place of worship where they preached all their life that man lives and dies by the wish of God. Is there an explanation for this phenomenon? So brother has asked basically three questions. First he gave according to him, the theory of evolution of man and said, where does God fit in? Secondly, after as God has created all this thing, how much of his power has been reduced? Thirdly, that when you get sick, you run to the hospital, not to the temple or church or masjid. Three part of the question. He said the answer will be short. The question was long. So imagine, to give a detailed answer will take time. Brother, I'd like to tell you that what you quoted about the hemosapiens, etc., you are talking about the theory of evolution, brother. Theory of evolution. I'm a medical doctor. I have not come across a single book in my life which says fact of evolution. It is theory of evolution. And even I know about the theory of evolution and about the Darwin's theory. Complete answer referred to my video cassette, Quran and Modern Science Conflict of Conciliation. What Darwin said was only a theory. He wrote a letter to his friend Thomas Thompson in 1881 that I believe in this theory of natural selection because I don't have any proof. Only because it helps me in natural selection, it helps me in embryology, in classification, in rudimentary organs. There's no book saying the fact of evolution. All the books say theory of evolution. That's why if we have to say to a friend that if you are present at Darwin's time, Darwin's theory has been proved right trying to insinuate to look like an ape. There were missing links. Darwin himself said the missing links. You spoke about the hominids, you only spoke about one wave. I'll tell you about all the four waves. The first wave was Lucy. Lucy. Lucy was the first wave which came three and a half million years. You talk about two million years, I'm telling you what scientists have said three million years ago. Lucy. It died out by the Ice Age. The second came the Homo erectus. Homo erectus about 500,000 years. After that came the Neanderthal man, the third wave, about 40,000 years ago. And the last was the Cro-Magnon. But brother, there's no link between all these stages. It's only a hypothesis. According to P.P. Grasset, according to P.P. Grasset, who held the chair of evolutionary studies in Paris, in Shoujon University, in 1971 he said, it is letting our imagination run too wild, just based on vestiges to say who our ancestors were. I do know there are some people who speak about Darwin's theory. I'm a medical doctor, I know about that. But do you know there are hundreds of scientists who speak against it? <laughs> Few scientists speak in favor, but there are more who speak against it. For the complete answer, refer to my video called the Quran Modern Science. There are few scientists because there's no fact of evolution, they say let's support a theory. Quran doesn't support any theory or hypothesis. Quran speaks about fact. 
So regarding your two million years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no beginning. When man came, no one knows the exact date. No one knows. Assumption, assumption. Assumption is there. But Quran says the first man was Adam alayhi salam. First man. And with it came Eve. May Allah be pleased with her. Man hasn't reached that stage. There is not a single statement in the Holy Quran which science has proved wrong yet. Hypothesis go against the Quran. Theories go against the Quran. There is not a single scientific fact which is mentioned in the Holy Quran which goes against established science. It may go against theory. So brother, your thing is only supported by few people, not by the majority. Regarding second part of the question, that if Allah has created all these things, how less his power has become. You can't understand it completely. As the Quran says in Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 103, is beyond comprehension. I can give you a simile, not exactly same, an ocean. If you take a drop out of the ocean, how much does the level of the ocean go down? How much? How much? Oh. Yet, yet, in spite of this, the difference between Allah becoming less when He creates things and the difference between the level of the ocean becoming less is infinite. The level of the ocean may become 0.000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 somewhere, 0 .00 somewhere it will end. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not even and not even a bit becomes this. He is all powerful. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If such a God who becomes less, we don't worship such God who becomes less, keeps on creating, he will sometimes lose his power. So this God is eternal, absolute. As I said in my talk, he is absolute and eternal. Everything depends on him. He doesn't depend on anything. Where did Allah come? Allah was before the universe created. Where does he fit in? Where did he get created? He is uncreated. You ask me the question, where did he come into existence? He is uncreated. It's like you asking me that when I tell that my friend, he told me that my brother Tom, he gave birth to a child. Is the child girl or a boy? I being a doctor know very well a man cannot give birth to a child. So where does the question come? That doesn't mean a person gets sick, only go to the temple. Because the Quran says in Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 43, as well as in Surah Furqan chapter 25 verse 59, if you are in doubt, go to a person who knows, who is an expert. If you get sick, besides praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go to a person who is an expert in medicine, go to a doctor. Quran says that. <laughs> but even after going to the doctor, have faith in Allah. Because he is the person who cures you, he can cure you with a doctor or without a doctor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we don't believe in blind belief. No Muslim scholar will ever say, if you are sick, don't go to a doctor. So go to a doctor, but finally, who cures is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why all the doctors, when all their brain, all their science, all the medicine fails, they say, it is only Allah who can save you. Welcome back friends. I hope you enjoy the video till the last minute. The brother asked a very question, uh, interesting question, a hypothetical question and we can say a theoretical question about the evolution of man. He gives some references about that 500, 5000 years ago the human brain size like that and 50, 100 years ago the, you know he was talking about the theories about the evolution of man. So here are some theories which say that man, the human, the, the modern shape of human, it's uh, about uh, the monkey. That you know the monkey, monkey has same two legs, two uh, uh, hands, uh, same nose, same ears, same eyes, but he have a tail. So most of the scientists, they say that uh, the human become inverted from the monkey. But let me explain you that these all theories, all hypotheses are just fact because our Holy Quran doesn't support any kind of theory, any kind of ideology and also the any kind of uh, hypothetical question. The Quran is straightforward. Quran say a thing so it's a real thing. He, Quran is all about the logical things, not about the idea, hypothesis, 
like that. So if we look at the Holy Quran, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we create the Adam from the clay. In the second words, in other parts of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, uh, that we create human from the water, jumping water. Dafiq means that water which is throwable. So the creation of human is from the clay. If we look at the creation of Adam salam, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, called to the angels that go and pick soil from the different color of the earth. So the angel, the angel pick uh, seven colors of clay, black, white, red, yellow, different kind of clay created and it make a mixture. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the body of Adam alayhi salam. So actually, this is the creation of Adam alayhi salam. And after that, from the, his ribs, I think from his uh, right rib, from the left rib, the wife of Adam alayhi salam, Hawa, has been created. And after that, the human began to arrive in this world. And now, if we look at, there are thousand million, billion, uh, trillions of human going here and there. So all the creature, all of the human being, if we look at the creature, so the, from the Holy Quran, it proves that it created from the soil, from the clay, from the water. Originally, the Adam alayhi salam created from clay, and after that, all the human being created from the uh, what? From the throwing water, from the jumping water, as we in biological we say it's a sperm. The human eat food food come from what it came from the tree the tree create into the world uh, into the earth from the soil and from the soil it create tree create the tree give us food fruit and then we eat it create blood and then the blood create sperm so if we look at this step this uh, method it's also proved that human has been made, made from the soil from the clay so all the hypotheses, all the theories about the evolution of man that from monkey, from the mankind, different kind of things. So all are the factors. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you like the video, subscribe the channel and share it with your friends.